Since the beginning of the internet, one of the largest problems has been online predators. Over the past decade, platforms have been increasingly cracking down on internet creeps, and overall, I would consider it a far safer place than it was, say, 15 years ago. However, with time comes change, and these creeps have implemented new ways to blend into the general population without revealing their true self. The main method they use is their identity, using it as a shield, and demanding any criticism of them being deemed offensive and untrue. The perfect example of this is Aaron Reed, a minutely successful American journalist and trans activist that upon first glance seems fairly normal, though upon closer inspection there's far more that lays just beneath the surface. From regularly driving while intoxicated to allegedly selling laced drugs and purposefully endangering the lives of her customers to needing a court order to stop her from wearing her ex-wife's clothes, Erin Reed is one of the most degenerate figures on the entire internet. At the same time, she is celebrated in the media and hundreds of thousands of people follow her actively on Twitter. How is it that such a terrible person has gained attention in favor of so many different individuals. At the end of the day, I think it's important to recognize most of these people are completely unaware of her past behavior and continual delusion, and so never really had the chance to see her in any other light. Today, I intend to expose exactly who she is and prove her innocent demeanor wrong, however. So with all that being said, let's start from the beginning and see just where it all went wrong. Anthony Reed, who later transitioned to Aaron Reed, was born on August 18th, 1988, and is currently 34 years old. It's important to mention that she did not transition until he was 20, meaning that she has lived the majority of her life as a man. Not much of Aaron's early life is known, as she didn't even have a known Twitter account until April of 2019 going by the handle Aaron in the morning. The reason why she made this Twitter account was to discuss her custody battle with her ex-wife, whose name is Kate Brittingham. Her first important tweet read, Just to make things more fun in my life, my ex-wife, who had no interest in custody of our child before I came out as trans, is suddenly fighting me for custody. Wonder what changed. Aaron believed that her ex-wife was only fighting for custody of the child because of coming out. Whether this is true or not, there's a lot more drama to the divorce that meets the eye. My ex-wife outed me to her entire family. I'm not even out to my family. When I came out to her, she said, she would be supportive. She was acting supportive over the phone just now, and then she dropped the bombshell on me, because she needs support too. I'm not even fully divorced yet, and she barely plays a role in our son's life, but now she's considering trying for joint custody, which I'm okay with, but I'm not sure if she's doing it because she, she wants it, or because her parents predictably reacted poorly. She also told me I can't have the name mom because she gave birth. What the fuck? Everything sucks. I am now terrified. My ex-wife literally told me she was mad I was hiding this from her. Like, what the fuck? I was hiding this from myself. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but let's be extremely clear. At this point in time, they weren't even fully divorced yet. To say that her reasons for wanting joint custody are invalid because you believe it's solely because of your transition is delusional. Just because she hasn't brought up joint custody before this point doesn't prove anything. You aren't even fully divorced yet. How do you know she wasn't going to talk to you about joint custody until later? Also, she did give birth. It's completely reasonable for the ex-wife to expect to be referred to as mom. Saying everything sucks and that you're terrified is a blatant overreaction and a good example of how immature and unfit to be a mother or father you are. Another interesting addition to the Aaron Reed lore would be how in one of the divorce documents it specifically stated that Aaron is not allowed to wear her ex-wife's clothes. The fact that this even had to be stated is crazy and displays that there might have been even more drama to the divorce that we're not even aware of, though I guess only time will tell if we'll ever get an official explanation from his ex-wife as to why the court had to demand this. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, Aaron is also an avid drug user. Perhaps her worst crime would be selling what were probably laced acid tabs, otherwise known as LSD. While there's no direct proof that the acid was laced, from reading this Reddit post where she describes demanding her buyers to not call 911 when having a bad trip as a result of her questionable acid, it's pretty clear that there was something suspicious going on. Here's a story. A long time ago, I was an acid dealer. This post was made 10 years ago, around 2012. She was arrested and charged with a third degree felony for for drug possession in 2010, which means she was actively dealing within two years of writing this post, so that's another blatant lie. I dealt with a whole lot of it. I did it for years without getting caught. Here's what I told all of my customers. If you feel like you're going to freak out, do not call 911. Call me. I am your 911. I have the antidote. Now, you guys may be wondering what this mysterious antidote could possibly be, but surprise, surprise, it was more drugs. I always kept 20 2 milligram Xanax on hand. I was called 5 to 10 times throughout my career, I'd drive 45 minutes at times, crush a full Xanax bar, put it into a shot glass of soda or juice, usually within 15 minutes they were asleep or had come down and weren't freaking out anymore. Now this is needless to say, but if
if you're selling drugs to someone and they're having a bad trip, the one thing you should never do is supply more drugs. It's flat out irresponsible to demand they call you instead of receiving proper medical attention. Erin has discussed her drug use online many times, but here are some highlights. This forum post, where Erin posted under the name Supernova Sky, describes, quote, the most drugs in a single combo I've, I've ever done at a festival. This included alcohol, weed, MDMA, MDA, LSD, a line of cokes, two hits off an opium pipe, and meth. Now I'm going to list several different times Erin has admitted to driving while intoxicated. In 2012, she says she was about 0.02 over the legal limit while she was driving a friend home. I mean, really? Your friends trust you as a sober driver and you can't even control your drinking enough to avoid being drunk behind the wheel? In this post, Erin talks about driving a car while tripping on LSD. I have driven while tripping on many occasions. Only once did it cause any real problems. Well, I get into my car to bring a few friends home, and while driving down the road, I have this crazy urge to start strafing left and right with the car. It freaked me out a little how much I wanted to do this, but I kept control myself and everything was pretty uneventful. Then she admits, I once drove 30 minutes while tripping to a nearby town that had a nice club and the lines were coming out of the road and into the sky. That was cool. Now, I think it's important to talk about how she finally got arrested. According to this article, Erin had three small doses of an unscheduled drug known as 2CI. She attended a festival in Florida where she attempted to sell one of her 2CI pills to an undercover cop, leading to her arrest. This is all important in understanding who Erin Reed is because her status as a transgender woman did not begin earlier in her life. Only after long-term drug use, several arrests, and a nasty divorce with her wife did she finally come out. Whatever you want to say about transgenderism, it's important to recognize that this is not a label that makes you immune to all criticism. There are good and bad people in every group, and fostering a culture where it's not okay to call people out for bad behavior leads to far more degeneracy. Another thing that I would like to mention is that if you haven't noticed, Erin has a giant Reddit tattoo on her shoulder. The story behind that goes is that she was apparently drunk at a Reddit meetup and decided to get it. The reason why I wanted to mention that was because another part of Erin's story is that she was a moderator of Egg IRL, the largest trans grooming community on the entire site. That was until her mysterious disappearance from the subreddit in 2022. Now it's difficult to even begin to theorize why she left because it's definitely not lack of time. She is currently self-employed and is what I would refer to as terminally online. Now if I haven't mentioned it enough already, she spends a lot of time online. She has been caught interacting with several other trans social media influencers including Keffels and Brianna Wu who have both been caught grooming children in the past. However, not all of her interactions with strangers online have been positive. In this Twitter thread, Aaron Karen describes her experience with a journalist who she had felt had been disrespectful because she was referred to as Anthony while the journalist was describing her early life where she had clearly been male presenting at the time. She says, just had a cis ally write up a long post that's meant to be praising me, but instead it deadnames me and misgenders me while referring to me in the past. This is obviously ridiculous because the journalist is fully correct to refer to someone in the past how they identified in that moment, and nobody should have to rewrite history in their mind so that you can feel better, especially if they're putting a positive spin on it. Now, I think it's important to talk about the present and take a look at what Aaron has been doing recently. Aaron is currently dating Zoe Zephyr, a newly elected Democrat serving in the Montana House of Representatives. Zoe is also a transgender woman and has an interesting past as well. One of the most interesting points about this time in her life is that she admitted to driving children alone to a Super Smash Bros tournament despite the well-documented and known sexual predators that inhabit and are active in that community. So yeah, Aaron associates and dates some pretty suspicious people, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was something more going on. Now, what does she do currently for a living? Erin runs a site called Erin in the Morning, which describes itself as a place to discuss news on transgender legislation and life. Supposedly, it has 38,000 email subscriptions. The most obvious and interesting part of the site when you first click on it is the anti-trans legislation risk map. Here, Erin claims Florida is a do not travel zone. However, I think it's important to mention that she got her drug felony charge in Florida, so there's a a good chance she just has something against the state. Another thing to my point would be that Kentucky, which has been known for having the most severe anti-trans laws, isn't even labeled as do not travel. So Erin is probably throwing Florida under the bus solely because she's salty about getting caught dealing drugs there. Erin also marks the entire South and most of the Midwest as the worst act of anti-trans laws and places many states as at-risk zones solely because they have Republican governors or conservative populations. The rest of her site is not is interesting to say the least, and mainly focuses on general trans legislation. All of the comments on each news article seems to be from trans women, 
so it's safe to say this website is more popular among trans women than other kinds of people. Either way, I find it extremely concerning that someone with a history like this is continually allowed to preach social issues online with very few people willing to call her out. That does beg the question, why? Why are we not allowed to call people out like this without getting tons of hate in response? When I upload this video, I'm expecting tons of comments that will attempt to downplay her actions and justify any wrong Aaron has made, which is a lot of wrongs. Why do they do this? Well, if you're open-minded, stick with me for a moment while I explain. The truth is, there are bad people in every group, and it's a fact that some groups have many bad people, and some have a moderate amount, and others have a few. When people justify the actions of trans individuals, no matter how disgusting or degenerate, they're attempting to make the group seem like there are less bad people than there truly are. However, the trans movement does have a moderate amount of bad people. While it's not all of them, as that would be crazy to assume, there are a lot of bad actors that are given praise and protected from criticism because of their identity. I don't care who you are, nobody on the planet should ever be a protected class or immune from criticism, and that's the message for this video. As always, thank you for watching, and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so we can spread the message. Peace out.